Now let's see this uh, shortest remaining time first. Um, the name itself says that it is actually we are going to take the shortest jobs but in a different way and it is actually based on burst times criteria and the mode is uh, preemptive which means even when a process is running we are going to stop it and then schedule the other one uh, if the situations are like that okay uh, so let's see this example with example it will be clear and easy to explain so now watch it so i am going to start at time t equal to 0 and at that time only one process is available right so which is nothing but p1 so at time 0 only p1 is available i, I have no other option therefore i am going to schedule p1 fine and now once i schedule p1 here i'll just be careful i'll not uh, directly completely run it to execution i mean completion then what i do is i stop it at every one unit of time and then check in meanwhile with me which means during this time if i got any other process right which means i am going to stop at this point when the time is one and then i'll just check in this time if any process got available and what is the time time required for that so one thing you should be uh, careful is you have already executed p1 for one unit therefore uh, the processing time here is uh, going to be reduced to six right huh. And now we are going to check the next one. So what is it? It is nothing but uh, so I mean I'm ch I'm checking if any process is available by one. So by the time uh, we reach one, the time one, the process available will be P2. Therefore now I have P1 and P2 both available, and one is having a completion time of six, remaining time of six, and other is having a remaining time of five. So you could choose any one of them, right? But then depending on the shortest job, shortest uh, bus time. I am supposed to choose P2. Therefore, the next one which is chosen is P2, right? And now for P2, what is the burst time? It is actually 5, but then we don't run it to completion. We just run till one unit and then check it and then stop and see. So now I have, I have, uh, you know, I have uh, did this P2 for one. I executed P2 for one unit. Therefore, the remaining time will be four. Now the time is two. By the time two, when the arrival time, by the time two, I'll see what are the process available. So one more process got available, which is P3. Now I have P1, P2, and P3 available, and the P3's burst time is three. Therefore, the uh, shortest one among all these is three, uh, P3. Therefore, I'll take P3 and I'll schedule it for how long just for one unit and then I'll wait so since I executed for one unit therefore what is the time here uh, so the remaining time is 2 and now the time is 3 so when the time is 3 uh, I have one more process arriving which is P4 therefore I have P1, P2, P3, P4 right and now I am going to choose one of them so which one is the minimum among P1, P2, P3, P4 P4 is the minimum so P4 is going to be have you know here scheduled here and anyway i'll run it for one unit i don't have any other option i have to run it for one unit only because the burst time is one unit and then stop it anyway it is going to be stopped now the time is four and what are the process which are available p1 p2 p3 p4 and then p5 but p4 is over therefore you need not worry about it p4 is not there right so among this p1 p2 p3 p5 you just check which one is having the least uh, um, least time so which one is having the least time here so we have two process which are having the least remaining time one is p3 and the other is p5 p5 sorry p5 yeah p3 and p5 but but you have to pick the one which is having the least arrival time so which one is having the least arrival time p3 therefore you are supposed to pick p3 itself right and now p3 has to be run for one unit which means still five and then you should stop it and check it since you have run P3 for one unit, the remaining time will be one. And now you just check it if any process has arrived. Yes. One more process has arrived whose process ID is P6 and whose time is one. So I have now P1, P2, P3, P5, P6 except P4. I have all the process. In all these process, you are now supposed to see. Uh, once you have all the process available completely, right? Then you need not stop for every unit of time. The reason is now it is nothing but the shortest job first simple uh, why, why are we stopping here after every every uh, unit of time is just to check if a new process with shorter time shorter burst time has now become available but once all of them have become available then once i pick the least burst time 
then there is no way after executing the least one for some time someone else will become the least why because if someone else is least that would have been that would have been picked up earlier right therefore in this case once all the processes become available then this algorithm is nothing but shortest job first the reason is i mean the algorithm is nothing but uh, you could you could execute it as if it is non preemptive version right so now you could take the shortest one and you should you could keep on executing them one by one so what is the next one that has to be executed all of them are available you can pick the pick the least one least one is one and one here but then the arrival time of p3 is less therefore i am going to schedule p3 itself right and now what is it it is one unit 6 and it is zero therefore p3 is over and next one will be p6 so p6 will be scheduled it requires only one unit therefore seven and therefore it is going to be over so p6 is over and now i have three process p5 p1 p2 then which one will be picked up first p5 will be picked up right then what is the time for the p5 it is two units therefore it is nine right yeah and therefore p5 will be over which means this will be zero right and then which one will be picked up next the next one that will be picked up is after p5 only one one is okay p1 and p2 are remaining among these two the shortest one is p2 yes p2 will be picked up whose time will be uh, 9 plus 4 which is 13 right yeah 9 plus 4 which is 13 right and then the next one which will be picked up is p1 the last one so this is also zero and next finally this one will be picked up which will be run for 6 therefore 19 so p1 takes 19 got it so this is how you could you know implement uh, this uh, shortest remaining time first so the concept is like this even though you are picking the best one the shortest one at some point at some time you just execute it for one unit and check if there is any better process available if any better process is available which is having a burst time less than the remaining time of this process then preempt it and continue with the other one and then other one also you, you stop it and see so till how long should i stop it until all the process become available once all the process become available it will now become the non preemptive version which means we are not going to stop any process once we pick the pick the least one got it and the remaining factors can be filled out directly so if you want me to fill it i'll just fill it, fill it out okay and now this will not have canva effect because uh, even if a process is uh, very big but even though it has been scheduled after some time the shorter process will take care of it which means the shorter process will get into the execution right so once they become available so it is not going to be having any effect uh, with that canva effect i mean starvation starvation is not there now let's see this now completion time so completion time of p1 is you have to come from the end so see whenever you try you try to write the completion time always come from the end the reason is p1 is going to occur many times right and the last time at which p1 has occurred is going to give you the completion time if you go like this it will just give you the first time at which p1 has been executed right so come from the end the last one last time at which it has executed is there so completion time of p1 is 19 and p2 is 13 and p3 is 6 and p4 is 4 uh, and p5 is 9 uh, p6 is 7 uh, right that is about the completion time and what about turn around time turn around time is uh, completion time minus this so which is 19 12 4 1 5 2 3 4 this is the turn around time and what is waiting time waiting time is i told you waiting time is turn around time minus uh, bus time right then what is it 12 then 7 then 1 0 3 one this is the waiting time right now you can find out average waiting time and average turn around time and then sometimes they will ask you what is the response time so response time is nothing but after after a process has arrived how long does it take for you to schedule it for the first time how long does it take for you to run it for the first time for example uh, see this uh, p2 p1 is running immediately therefore response time is zero and then p2 p2 is running at time unit of 1 and it is arrived at 1 so immediately it is running so it is fine 
but P3, P3 has arrived at 2 and then it is running at 2 therefore the, uh, the uh, response time is 0 and then P, P4, P4 also arrived at 3 and it is running at 3 therefore response time is 0 and then yes P6, if you see P6, P6 arrived at time uh, 5 but it was running at time 6 for the first time therefore wait you know response time is 1 you have to wait for one unit of time likewise like that you can find out the response time not very important but uh, just you would know, know about it so this is all about the shortest remaining time first it is a basic modification of shortest job first with uh, you know it is even better compared to it anyway it cannot be applied practically it cannot be implemented practically the reason is we never know or we can never guess ac accurately what is the burst time for every process any any algorithm which is based on burst time can never be implemented practically because we cannot guess the burst times but if you have a mechanism using which you could guess the burst times maybe you could use it right fine